Hello, our viewers. Previously, we have tried to discuss about linear momentum. We have defined what momentum is. We have said that momentum is a property of massive body to exert force on any obstacles along its motion. We have mathematically expressed momentum as mass times velocity v. Since velocity is a vector quantity and mass is a scalar quantity, momentum is also a vector quantity. The product of scalar and vector gives us vector. Momentum has a unit kilogram meter per second, or it can be equivalently expressed as Newton second. We have also tried to solve a good example. And today we will proceed from that and we'll try to see the different types of impacts of linear momentum and the type of momentum. So let's proceed. Linear momentum has many impacts or applications. Among the applications of momentum, the most common is collision. The collision between objects can be expressed using the concept of momentum. The other concept is rocket propulsion. It's also possible to consider recoil or explosion of things can be expressed using momentum. One good application of momentum is collision. Collision is the impact between two or more objects. And then it, is, uh, it has different types of collision. We should have to have criteria to classify collision. The first thing, depending on the lines of the action where the, those bodies are colliding, it's possible to classify momentum or collision into two. The glancing collision and the head-on collision. Glancing collision has two differently uh, lines of action before and after collision. Suppose here you have two objects. Let's say that this is object one is moving in this direction and we have another object moving in this direction. This is their lines of action before collision. So after I, they collide together, as these objects collide all together, their lines of action will be changed. For example, if these two bodies are colliding after collision, this object might tend to move in this direction and the other object might move in this direction. So their lines of action differs. For example, here you have a cue ball so that it's moving in this direction and collides with this object. So the lines of action is not on this way. It changes its direction on the other way. And this object was having this it was at rest, it might move on this direction. Such type of collision is known to be glancing collision, depending on the lines of action. The other type of collision, and the most common type of collision, is known to be head-on collision. Head-on collision is a collision in which the lines of action remains constant before and after collision. Suppose you have two objects or two mass, they are moving with different speed oppositely, and collides together. After the collision, these objects might move on the same lines of action. These objects might move on this and oppositely, or they might stick together and move together on one direction, or they might move together on the other direction. So the lines of action remains. If the lines of action remains before and after collision, such type of collision is known to be head-on collision. So this is one of the impacts. We mainly focus on the collision and we'll try to see about the law of conservation of momentum. The law of conservation of momentum is a very important law um, of the universe. Among the governing rules in the universe, the law of conservation of mass, the law of conservation of energy. Here we have also the law of conservation of momentum. And the law of conservation of momentum is stated that for a given two different isolated objects, mainly focus only for two objects, for a given isolated system, the net force on those bodies is zero, then the momentum is conserved. Previously, we have stated that the net force or the impulse is equal to force times change in t. Force times change in t. The change of momentum the change of momentum means the final momentum minus the initial momentum is known to be impulse. If the net force exerted on those objects is zero, so that J or 
impulse is zero. If impulse is zero, meaning the final momentum minus the initial momentum is zero. The difference between the final and initial is zero. So if we transfer this, this tells you that the initial momentum is the same as or equals to that of the final momentum. This is known to be the law of conservation of momentum. So for a law of conservation of momentum on a given isolated object, if the net force exerted on them is zero, so that the momentum is conserved. Keep this in your mind. The final and the initial momentum are conserved. It can be restated that the sum of the sum of momenta, momentum of different objects, the polar uh, word of momentum, the sum of momenta of two bodies before collision is equal to the sum of momentum or momenta after collision. Let's take two bodies. Here we have mass one and mass two. Mass one has initial velocity u1. Let's say that it's moving with its initial velocity u1. And this object is moving with its initial velocity u2, with a constant velocity. So they are moving and colliding together. Okay? After collision, let's say that mass one is moving in this direction with a final velocity. After the collision, the velocity might be changed so that we can have v1. And this object has a velocity of v2. Okay? V2. So the momentum before collision, the summation of momentum before collision, meaning the momentum of mass one, the initial momentum of mass one can be expressed as mass one u1. This is the initial momentum of mass one. Okay? The initial momentum of mass two, meaning the momentum before collision, is m2 times its initial velocity u2. After collision, these bodies have their own respected velocity, so that they have their own final velocity. The momentum of particle one, final, or after collision, let's say that after collision, is mass one times the final velocity. Let's use u as initial velocity, v as final velocity. Before in kinematics, we use the initial velocity as velocity initial and velocity final, like this. But now, the initial velocity is expressed as u, the final velocity can be expressed using v. Therefore, m1 v1 means the collision of particle 1, or mass 1 after collision, and the final velocity of particle 2 or mass 2 is m2 v2. Now, the law of conservation states that the summation of the momentum before collision, the summation of mass 1 and the summation of momentum of mass 2 is equal to the final momentum, the summation of final momentum or the summation of momentum after collision, which is mass 1 v1 and mass 2 v2. So this rule states that m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. This is known to be the law of conservation of momentum. The law of conservation of momentum, and it's very practicable law. Let's try to see one good example. Suppose that we have two different mass, the mass that we have previously seen, and they are heading oppositely with different velocity. So let's try to determine the final velocities. Let's say that we have two different mass. Here you have mass one, two kilogram, and we have mass two, like three kilogram. So these bodies might move oppositely with their own initial velocity. Let's say initial velocity u1 is equal to uh, three meter per second. We have the final velocity, I mean the initial velocity of two, like five meter per second. So it's possible to find the final velocities using, using the different types of collision. We have different types of collisions. So next time we'll try to see how to manage these things. For example, you have this object is moving without of u1, oppositely, let's say 3 meters per second. The other object is moving without of the initial velocity of 5 meters per second, let's say that. 
So here you have two kilogram and three kilogram. As these objects move and collide together, as these objects move and collide together, there are different types of collision that we are going to see next time. And these types of collisions might be elastic and inelastic collision. After we see those types of collision, we'll try to solve the final velocities. That means these two bodies might collide together, okay? After collision, we can find the final velocity of V1 and the final velocity of V2. So how do we determine the final velocities? Well, to determine the final velocities, we should have to see the different types of collisions. If they are colliding elastically, we have a different techniques. If they are colliding a perfect inelastic collision, we have different techniques. So the momentum always remains constant, keeping that in your mind. Next time, we'll try to see the different types of collision and solve some more examples. So, so far, we have tried to see the different types of um, applications of momentum or impacts of momentum. The impacts of momentum are like collision and rocket propulsion uh, as well as a recoil. We mainly focus on collision. Collision can be classified into two as head-on and glancing collision. Head-on collision is a collision as the lines of action remain constant before and after collision. Whereas glancing collision is a collision in which the lines of action differs before and after collision. The other thing that we have seen is the law of angular, the law of momentum. We have seen about the law of linear momentum. The law of momentum states that for a given system, for a given isolated system, meaning isolated means there is no external applied force. If there is no external applied force on a given system, it's possible to say that the momentum remains constant. The momentum before and after collision remains constant or equal. The impulse or the change of momentum is zero. Note that on law of conservation of momentum, it says that the change of momentum is zero. The impulse is also zero. Impulse is a change of momentum. And the other concept is the net force. Because that, we know that impulse is equal to force times change in t. The impulse is zero due to the applied force is zero. As the applied force is zero, the change of momentum is also zero. But the momentum, not the change, the change of momentum in momentum differs. The change is the difference between final momentum and initial momentum. So the momentum is constant. Because the final momentum minus the initial momentum, the change is zero, so that the final and the initial momentum are equal. This is all uh, what we have previously discussed. And at last, we have seen that m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is a law of conservation of momentum. So this is what we have uh, discussed. Next time, we'll try to see about the types of momentum, and we'll try to solve the different types of uh, problems. So this is all that I have got for today. So see you next time.